Good evening, ladies. Um, tonight, I thought we would just think for a few minutes, that's all it is, um, about a great treasure that we all have. I think we all have it with us tonight, and that is the Bible, God's Word. Um, it is one of the greatest treasures we can possess, and I think I'll need to use these. In Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 down to 5, we'll not read it all, just um, 1, 4 and 5 I'm going to read. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, if thou seekest her as silver, verse 4, and searchest for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And it talks there about God's word being like seeking for silver and for hid treasures. And sometimes I think we take for granted God's word um, and how freely we have it today. And we, I'm sure every one of us ladies has more than one Bible. You might have a small Bible, maybe you bring to church, maybe you have a study Bible at home, maybe you have a favorite Bible that you've marked um, with special verses. I know I have one that's a wee bit falling apart and I really need to replace it, but I don't want to because I know where everything is in it. Um, and we freely have it, and it truly is our guidebook for life, the Bible, and it, it gives us great wisdom, uh, instruction, and knowledge in all things. But, you know, I've been struck, in the children's meeting and path leaders who have been doing over the last number of weeks, we've been teaching the children where the Bible came from, why, who wrote the Bible, um, why it's important, and of course, teaching them verses from the from God's word. And last week, I thought I would ask them, just as they left, how many of them actually have a Bible in their house? Now, there was 25 kids there last week. And out of the 25, 17 said they didn't have a Bible. And of the eight that said they did, there was one wee boy who says it was, wasn't his Bible, it was his brother's Bible. And that just... Is so sad. This is an Oma today. There, we have the Bible, we maybe have so many we could give them away, and yet there's so many around us that know no Bible, only us, which means we should live the Bible out for them to see. As it says in James 1 verse 22, be ye doers of the word, because that's all that the people around us, those that we work with, those that we pass in the shop, those that are friends, family, even those that do have Bibles, they maybe are sitting on a shelf and they're never looked at. And how do they ever know who, how, that God loves them if they don't see it in our lives? But as I was thinking of the, the children and just different things to bring to them, another thing came to mind, and it was a story I'd read a long time ago, a true story. And I would think maybe some of you here have know the story, Mary Jones and her Bible. Who knows that story? Good. So you all nearly know it. Mary Jones is a true story. I think I got it as a Sunday school prize years ago. But she was a little girl who grew up in the Welsh Valleys, and she loved God, and she knew God as her Savior, but she didn't have a Bible. And... The only time she ever heard the Bible was when she went to church, the walk to church on a Sunday. And that wasn't good enough for her. She wanted to have a Bible of her own. And the neighbor, Mrs. Evans, the farmer's wife, said, Mary, if you learn to read, you can come to my house and read the Bible any time you want. And I had to remind myself of this story. It's that long ago that I'd read it, so maybe I'm telling you all and you know it so well. But um, I just thought it was interesting. This was back in the late 1700s this happened. And so Mary, there was no school, um, but eventually a school was opened in her area. She learned to read quickly. And then she went, as Mrs. Evans said, she walked two miles as often as she could to her house to read the Bible. And I wonder tonight if we had had to walk here tonight, how many of us would have made it? But she had determination because she wanted to read God's word. And sometimes I think we take it for granted. But not only that, um, that wasn't enough just to see it occasionally and hear it on a Sunday. She wanted her own copy. And so she started to save every wee bit of money she could from 
gathering eggs, from cleaning her neighbors' houses, from babysitting, and she gathered money, and it took her six years to gather enough money to buy a Bible. And she knew there was a man called Mr. Charles who lived in a town some distance away that sold Bibles. So one morning, very early, she set off to walk, and it was 26 miles she walked, and she went barefoot because she had only one pair of shoes. She carried her shoes with her so that when she got to the town, she would be able to put them on and go and see the man um, more respectably looking. And she was, at at that time, she was 15 years of age, 15, and she walked all those miles to get a Bible. And even when she got there, there was more problems, but I haven't time to tell you that. But as a result of that, that man, Mr. Charles, was so amazed at this wee girl coming so far just to get a Bible that he took that story back to London to a big gathering of a lot of men who were important and told them about how this little girl from Wales had no Bible to read. And the men talked among themselves and they thought this was terrible and they needed to start a Bible society. And they'd started the British and Foreign Bible Society, not just for the people who lived in Wales, but for across the world. And that was in 1804, that as a result of Mary um, traveling that distance and making that impression on Mr. Charles, he brought the story and those men started that Bible Society. And it's still about today. I think it's just called the Bible Society today. But I hope just these few wee thoughts that tomorrow morning when you wake up and you maybe read your Bible, that you think of it as a real treasure to have and that you do as what it says in Psalm 119 verse 11, to hide it in your heart, to thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee and that others might even see the Bible through your life too.